So I'll shake off these heavy chains I'm fully understand I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed I am redeemed I am Anybody got anything they want to share about the goodness of the Lord that's happened to you this week, somewhere along the line? Say it again. Well, praise the Lord. Yeah. You know, really believe it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I'm glad you put that on Facebook too. Um, dogs are like God. Um, to me, they are. They love unconditionally. Yes, they do. I can remember. I felt like nobody loved me, but Peaches just loved me. She loved me. That's the way God is. He just loves you. So, praise the Lord. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. We missed you. Yeah. We missed you too, honey. Yeah. <laughs> but he said just the joy he said he took his son to Disney World because he never really got the opportunity to go when he was young he said his son kept saying dad I want to go back to the hotel and swim he said son he said we got a pool back at the house that you can swim at any time with your friend he said dad I don't want to stay here I just want to go home and go back to the hotel and swim he said sometimes you don't have to spend a lot of money yeah. to enjoy life he said it's just a It is. God in the simple things. That's powerful. Yeah. It's not. We're blessed that you're here. And Harley. It's good to see see Harley. He feels the presence of the Lord back there. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Oh, Lord. Anybody else? Look to your neighbor and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Can you put my title up there, Mr. Grady? 
Everybody say the dispute. And you know, the real truth of it is the dispute is over. There really ain't no dispute. Uh, do you have your con- Do you have the Webster's Dictionary on that? Can you? Okay, pull it up and uh, let me get the definition of the dispute. You know uh, what Alicia put on Facebook is is powerful, and I'm amazed at how you know, like a little simple phrase like that can go all over the world, and even preachers. We are all preachers to some to some extent. When preachers see that, it's like wow. To me, it's just like you know, that's the gospel. If we would just embrace everybody instead of embracing people's differences, you know, just what a different world it would be. And uh, somewhere, somewhere humanity still thinks that we've got this great dispute going on. And uh, there really is no dispute. Jesus either took care of the dispute or he didn't take care of the dispute. And, you know, one big dispute that we all wrestle with every day, probably whether we want to believe it or not, is just, is just uh, one little simple word, Blessed. I mean, we know the Lord has blessed us, but do we really believe the Lord has blessed us? And then take it one step further, we get into this dispute of who has the Lord blessed. Does he bless the people that go to church? Uh, does he bless people that give more? Does he bless, d- does what I have, does my car, does my house, does my, my swim? And I'm not knocking none of that. I'm not knocking none of that. Does that, does that show people that I'm blessed? What 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 is what is what 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 says that I'm blessed? God has equally blessed every human being the same. In the church, we have stereotyped people, and we think just because we go to a church or even a certain church, or because we do church a certain way, or they don't do church a certain way, God seems to like us a little bit better than He does them. You know, don't get mad. Don't, don't get mad at me. I am pro-church. I, bl- I believe in church. But you know what? Some of the biggest gums, some of the biggest messes did not come out of the world. No. It's come out of the church. And sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, there was a part of my life about three or four months ago, I didn't want, I didn't want the people I worked with, the first job I went to, no, no disrespect to them. I didn't, want, I didn't even want them to know I was a preacher. I didn't, don't, now don't, don't get mad at me. I didn't even want them to know I go to church. Because I could hear them talk. And when they would talk, it was like when God was brought up, it, it, it wasn't God brought up out of the church. It was just how God had been good to them right where they was. But then when church did come into the conversation, it never was good. I'm telling you, it never was good. And there come a day I got cornered. And I had to be like Jonah. I felt like Jonah on that boat. What do you do? Oh, I'm a Hebrew. That's what Jonah had to tell these guys on the boat. And when I got cornered, I got pushed to the corner. And they said, well, what, what, what do you used to do? I kept, oh, God. I, can, I be, can I just be honest with you? <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I, they, they pushed me in the corner. And they said, well, what, what do you used to do? What do, what do you used to do? And I'm going to be I wish I could have said, well, I just come out of a drug rehab. I wish I could have told them that. I wish I could just said, you know what? I got jerked out of a bar a few weeks ago, and that's where I come from. But I took a deep breath, and I said, well, uh, I'm a preacher. One of them said, well, hell. (laughs) I'm just telling you. He said, said, we have cussed for three weeks around you. And didn't know you was a preacher. And I said, I'm glad. I, I said, don't, don't change your lifestyle because of, I'm a preacher. I said, don't bother me at all. Do, do what you got to do. I mean, don't bother. I, ain't, I don't judge you. I'm not God. I'm just here trying to survive like you did. And then they begin to, this is what bothered me. Then they begin to treat me different. They played this music in the, in the, I'm gonna be, in the warehouse that I was in. And not where you're at. I mean, th- this is the other place I worked at. They played this music, and it was all this hard rock. And then it was next day it was country music. And then you didn't know whether you was going to do cocaine or you was going to go out and drink beer due to the music that you did. But the thing I'm saying is, then they found out who I was, and then they turned it on to Love 89. <laughs> and I thought, and I really thought, I don't even really like that music. I can hear more gospel. I guess I ought to be real quick. But anyway, they began to try to change their lifestyle because of me. And I heard the Lord say, that ain't right. People should not change their lifestyle because of you. They should have changed their lifestyle because of me. 
So I went and told him, I said, you don't have to change that radio station because of me. You don't have to change the way you talk because of me. Just be who you are. I, don't, I mean, I, I don't, if you cuss, you cuss. I mean, I just, just do what you got to do. Don't, please don't change. And then when they begin to see that I was just a real old boy like they was, that I wasn't some pious preacher, they begin to just be themselves again. I don't want people to think that I am somebody highly blessed and highly favored and they're way off down yonder somewhere far beyond. That, look to them and say, that ain't God. Every human has been blessed the same way. You know what your greatest blessing is? And when I say your greatest blessing, I know as good Baptists and Pentecostals and uh, we could raise our hand and say, I've been saved by the blood of Jesus and I'm on my way to heaven. Glory be to God. Well, yeah, that is good. That is great. But you, you know what's the greatest blessing every human being has on the planet? And everybody this morning got up with it. You get to breathe. And you get to walk out this door and you get to enjoy life. Just like he said, you get to enjoy the simple things of life. Now, Everybody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You've got breath. You, you're not blessed because you drive a Lexus. You're not ble- and I, I, if you've got one, praise God for it. You're not blessed because you've got a million-dollar house. If you've got one, praise God for it. But that ain't the reason you're blessed. You're blessed because you can breathe, and God gave you breath for one purpose. Last verse. You've got, you got this book in the book of Psalms. You've got, you got 150 chapters in the book of Psalms. David talking about worship. David talking about praise. David talking about intimacy. David and this man, this man named David, I can relate to him more than I can anybody in the Bible. I've been some of the places that he's been. Not all the places he's been, but I've been some of the places that he's been. And I hope one day God can say about me what he said about David. This man is a man after my own heart. Say it about well, he does. He, he, we are a people after his own heart. But all the things that David said, you know, when you're going, to, when you're going to stop, if you had a long conversation with somebody and you're getting ready to leave that person, you're not going to probably talk to them anymore. The last thing that you say to them, that's the real thing you want them to remember. And the last thing David says in the Psalms is this, chapter 150, the last verse that he says. Throw it up there real quickly. Psalms 150, let everything that hath, he does not say whether you're saved or unsaved. See, I, I mean, you may think I'm crazy and I need to be on medicine. I watched my little dog, Peaches, I watched her. I would watch her just do things and I would think, you know, maybe she knows God more than some of the people I hang around with. And it was like she was, have you ever noticed your little dog? They, would, they, would, they do things sometimes that's just, just crazy. It, and again, it says, let, let everything that hath breath do one thing. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. My greatest blessing is that I've got breath, watch this, to praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And of all the things that David said in the Psalms, the last thing that he said was this, man. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Yes. Everything. Sometimes I watch the wind blow through the trees and I think, you know what, the, the, the trees have got more, the creation's got more sense than we. It's like they're waving to God. You may think you're, you smoke something before you came in here. No, 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 no. I just believe all creation groans for us, us to grow up and give God His glory and give God His due and that is to bless the Lord. Amen. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and everything that's within me, I will bless Him. I will bless him at all times. I will bless the Lord. So the greatest blessing that me and you have is that we 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 can breathe. I'm not blessed because I'm a Baptist or a Methodist or Pentecostal finished work kingdom. That, that, that is so crappy. That is so elementary. That is, I can I know why people don't want to go to church anymore. That you know you, you I, I'm blessed because I do it right, and you're cursed because you do it wrong. That is so. Wrong. Well, you, you, I'm blessed because I don't sin. You're cursed because you do sin. Well, I'm, I've said this before. With, uh, this is going to bother some of you who's never heard this for the first time. Sin is not the issue with God anymore. Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. Either Jesus took it away or he didn't take it away. Here's the real issue with God. Righteousness, righteousness. You and I are righteous through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen to that right there? So everybody say the big dispute. 
Now, I tell, you, I tell you where I want to start. John chapter 4. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. I won't go probably in order of those scriptures. John chapter number 4. Jesus came in John chapter number 4 to a well. It was Jacob's well. It was a really popular place. Jews came there at a certain time to get water, and then the Samaritans came there at a certain time to get water. But all of a sudden, Jesus shows up about noontime. Nobody comes and gets water at noontime. And when Jesus shows up at noontime, there was this woman there who was a woman. She, she, everybody, the song we just sung about just sort of changed everything that I was thinking about to preach. She was a woman that had, um, well, I'll just give you the story. Jesus shows up at this well, John chapter number 4. I'm just going to go to these, these verses right here. John chapter 4, the previous verses. He shows up, and this woman shows up. And he says, give me a drink of water. And she looks at him, seeing that he was a Jew. And her being a Samaritan, she, she, it really blew her away because the religious Jews in that hour, they had nothing to do with Samaritans because, see, the Jews thought they were highly blessed, and the Samaritans, they weren't blessed. So Jesus looked at her and said, he put her on the spot. He said, give me a drink of water, first of all. First of all, what are you doing out here at noontime to get water? I tell you why she's doing out there at noontime to get water. She wanted nobody to see her because she had, she, she's, carrying, she's carrying a reputation. Here's what I like about Jesus. He's not afraid of nobody's reputation. How good or bad it is, he's not afraid of your reputation. He shows up, and when this, when this Jew looks at her and says, man, I, I want a drink of water, she's thinking, how is it that you would ask me water? First of all, I am a Samaritan, and not only that, I, I, I've got a reputation, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide my reputation from you. But she can't hide nothing from Jesus. And she begins to converse with Jesus. And all of a sudden, Jesus asks the most, oh, Jesus asks the question that she does not want to be asked. He says, Go get your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. And he says, you well said. You have five, and the one you got now that makes six is not your own, which means she had six men, which says to me and you, man cannot bring satisfaction to you. But honey, that, you got five, and the one you got now is not yours. But Jesus was the seventh man standing at the well. He showed up just the right time. It's only the seventh man that can make you complete. Johnny Rivers sung a song. More gospel in the 70s than these songs I ever heard. Johnny Rivers sung a song. The son of a preacher man. The son of the seventh man. The seventh son. He, he don't even what he's singing about. He's singing about Jesus. So Jesus shows up and she says, Holy cow. You've just got me. You've just got me. But see, Jesus... This is what blows me away. Jesus did not, Sean, come to condemn her. Jesus comes to bless her. But she's got this. See, the husband thing, it, it, the husband thing ain't the real issue with her. These verses are going to show you the real issue with her. She has got this mentality who's blessed, who ain't blessed. In her being, she thinks, I'm blessed, but the Jews ain't blessed. And the Jews are thinking, I'm blessed, and they ain't blessed. The Jews called these half-breeds. Jesus had another instance with a woman. She was called a Syro. Am, am I okay? Yeah. He had another instance with a woman called a Syrophoenician woman. Same deal, half-breed. She came to Jesus one time and said, Lord, heal my daughter. Heal my daughter. Jesus looked at her and said, it's not me. Man, Jesus said some stuff, man, that will blow you away. Jesus said, it's not me to give the children's bread to dogs. You know what he just, seemed like he called, he just called her a dog. Now, I've called some people. Well, probably worse stuff than dogs. But anyway, that was pretty bad for Jesus to call somebody a dog. But you know what? That didn't stop her. She jumped right back up in Jesus' face. Some, don't, sometimes you've got to get right back up in the face of Jesus. Everybody say the face of Jesus. She said, oh, yeah, but, Lord, you might be calling me a dog, but even a dog gets the crumbs on the master's table. And see, just one little crumb, just one little crumb from Jesus changes everything. And Jesus was astonished. But here this woman is, her, her, her problem is not that she's got Six men. That ain't her problem. Her problem ain't what she does external. Listen to this right here. People's problem ain't what they do external. Their problem is what's going on internal. Yes. This woman has an internal problem, and the only person that can fix the internal problem is Jesus. Yes. You can go to church till you fall over, and it won't get your internal problem fixed. Matter of fact, if you've got internal problems without going to Jesus, the more you go to church, the worse it might get. 
Now here, see, Jesus done dealt with a man deal. He's done dealt care. That. that ain't the real problem. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou a prophet. Now the reason she says that Jesus read her mail, bang, 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 bang. He could have probably told the addresses of every, every man that she'd ever been with. But he watches. He's, the woman says, Sir, now this is a Samaritan, a Samaritan woman. She says, The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou a prophet. Now watch this. Oh, this gets good now. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Hold it right there. Hold it. Nowhere, nowhere in that verse did Jesus say, watch this, you're supposed to go to Jerusalem to worship. He didn't say that. She perceived that because the Jews, watch this, who were at Jerusalem had communicated to the Samaritans, the only place that you can worship is Jerusalem. So you've got this big old fight going on between the Samaritans. You worship in this mountain. And guess what? The Jews say, no, we worship in this mountain. So watch, who's the more blessed one? You've got this group over saying, we're more blessed. We've got this group over here saying, we're more blessed. It's the same problem today. You've got the Baptists, well, not so much the Baptists, but you've got kingdom folk over here finished work, people over here, and God help me, now we got another message on the scene called grace. <laughs> finished work used to say, we got it above kingdom folk. Kingdom folk say, no, we got it because God still processes people. And now grace stands up above everybody and says, there's a new message on the scene, it's grace. Honey, this ain't a new message called grace. Grace has been here 2,000 years. And what kills me about all this stuff, when, and I've been in these circles. I preach in these circles. I used to, I'm not in a circle anymore. I'm not in the circle anymore because the circle is just a... And the more you go around, the dizzier you get. Come here. You stand here. You'll be the Samaritan. you be the Jew. You right here. Stand up on the platform here. Right there. You stand up right there. You look at her and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You look at her and say, No, I'm more blessed. No, I'm more blessed. No, I'm more blessed. I'm more blessed than you. I'm blessed right now. Come here, Alicia. Come on, 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 come on. Give me some more paper. Get in the middle. Get in the middle. Come on. See, I can't get nobody to help me today. Now go ahead, holler back and forth. No, wait, you, wait, 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 you're not working here. There you go. Come on back. Down. You see, you're not up where they are. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead now. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm more blessed. I'm more blessed. Do you head back and forth? I'm the blessed of most. I'm the most. Now, now here we are. Watch. Here we are. We're caught in the middle. We don't know what in the H-E-Double hockey stick's going on. We're caught in the middle of a fight. You all can stay down. And you know what? You, you, you all go sit down. You all stay right here. We don't know where to go to this church or this church. Come to my church. I'm more blessed. I'm more blessed than that. Come over here. No, come over here. I'm more blessed. Well, you know what? We're more blessed because we've got Grace Connection on the door. Are you following me? What? Well, Say, my building is bigger than your building. My building is bigger than your building. Say, no, I've got more people. No, I've got more people. Say, my offering, say, yep, yep, there you go. No, our preaching is better. Our offering is bigger. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> I'm more blessed. Say, I speak in tongues. I, 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 see, there you go. You're, you're here in the heart of God now, and I don't know what to do. I don't know where I go finished. I don't know where I go grace. I, sometimes I think, why don't I sit on the back porch and drink coffee and just me and God be alone? And sing that song, Chris. Chris drives on, me and Jesus. We got our own thing going. You all go ahead and fight. And we call us deeper life people. Oh, come on, get off of it. Buddy, I've been in the kingdom circle. I've been in the finished work circle. I've been in the grace circle. And I'm still in those things. It just ain't a circle anymore. It's a life. Yes. Yes. Buddy, I preach on... I preach in a warehouse. I preach in an office without saying anything. Y'all can sit down. You, you catch where I'm at right now? So here's what you got. You got the Jews over here saying we are blessed because we worship in Jerusalem. And then you got, then you got the Samaritans saying, no, we're blessed because we, we, we worship where Moses told us to worship. 
Now, watch these two, watch these two things right here. Give me De- my first scripture in the book of Deuteronomy. The Samaritan, let me read the rest of the scripture right here. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and ye say, watch this, that in Jerusalem is the place where a man ought to worship. Now, wait a minute. Jesus didn't say that. Watch the next verse. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither worship in this mountain that you're talking about, nor yet at Jerusalem where you were. Let me get that right. You shall neither worship in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Next verse. You worship, you know not what. We, man, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Watch this big deal. But the hour cometh, now here's what he's saying. You worship because Moses said you to worship over here. We worship because we're Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Come back, come back. Fight going on right here. Fight, fight. They're saying, this is where God's at, and this is saying where God's at, and the people in the middle has just got a heart just to worship God. I don't care. So they keep on fighting, and God draws a remnant of people out that says, you know what, I don't care what the name on the door is. I'm just going to worship God. Church without walls. Have you ever noticed that Jesus did more ministry outside the church than he did inside the church? So watch what Jesus did. Now, this is the Jewish woman. You go sit down. You stay right there, Samaritan woman. Jesus is about to dispel her only logical truth that God worships in this mountain. He just said, you know... The hour come where you're not going to worship in that mountain or that mountain. Deuteronomy, stay right there. This is where she's coming from. This is where the Samaritan woman's coming from. Deuteronomy eleven twenty nine, And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God hath brought thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing. Now, here's what the Samaritan woman says. Thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount. Can anybody say that word for me? Gerzim, and the curse upon Mount Ebal. So really what she's saying, this is what she's saying, the Samaritan woman, I'm blessed because God said in Deuteronomy 11, 29, that this is where we are to worship. And really what she's saying to the Jew over here, you're cursed. And then what she's saying, no, God said this is where we are to worship, watch this, and you're cursed. And then you've got a whole bunch of innocent people caught in the middle. And church is not what God called it to be. God did not call us to curse each other. Guess what I have done most of my life? I said because I, be- see, when I was a Baptist, I was a good Baptist, bless God. Saved and my name's wrote in the book. Your name in the book, but your name ain't in the book. You better get your name in the book, you're going to go to hell. That was my theory. Then I got filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Then the very church that brought me into the kingdom of God, I began to look back at them and say, I'm more blessed than you are. I speak in tongues. We are full gospel. I'm full gospel. Help me, Jesus. And then I would look back at the Baptists and say, no, 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 no. I'm more blessed. I'm more blessed. And then, watch this, I got in the kingdom circle. Then I began to look back at the Pentecostals and the Baptists and say, I'm more blessed than you all. Y'all way behind. Y'all way behind. And then I got in the finished work circle, and then I looked back at the kingdom, Pentecostal, and then the Baptist people said, I'm blessed, you're cursed. And then here comes the grace message. I just float now. And God is going, you know, the whole issue makes me lukewarm or makes me feel this stuff in my mouth makes me just want to vomit because what's happening between these two camps is I've got a people that's innocent caught in the middle. And see, I'm not talking about people that necessarily go to church. The people down at the Mexican restaurant that's going to knock the bottom out of a 32-ounce watch this Miller Lite after a while, they're caught in the middle. So here's what she's saying. Give me my next Deuteronomy scripture. Not only has she got this scripture to go to, give me, give me a next scripture. They'll give you another Deuteronomy scripture, Rachel. They'll give you another Deuteronomy scripture. I only give you one. Yeah, yeah, give me that one. These shall stand up on Mount Gershom to bless the people when you're come over to Jordan. 
Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin. So here's what she's saying. This is a mountain we worship it, and we're more blessed because God said in the Old Testament. We're blessed. Come on back now. So here's what you got. You got a fight. Now what Jesus just did, stay with me. I won't be much longer. What Jesus just did with a Samaritan woman, he dispelled her dispute. He just said, you're not going to worship in that mountain anymore. That God ain't on that mountain anymore. God, God ain't on that mountain anymore. And if you think you've got to go to a certain mountain to get to God, it's not there anymore. So not only did he dispel, watch this, the whole issue with the men, the men wasn't the real issue. The dispute was God has favored me because we worship on this certain mountain. That's what God dispelled. So now watch what he did now. Watch this stay, this stay, watch. He, he, he dispelled this dispute right here. So now you go sit down. The Samaritan woman has got her issue took care of. Now, that wasn't the bad one. Jesus is of this camp right here. This is the issue. This morning with me preaching, my dispute is not with the people down that way. My dispute and my custom will come right through what comes through that camera right there. Because there's three different camps that watch this. Well, a lot of camps watch this. You got, well, hallelujah. And that's what they are, they're just camps. Anything is camp setting. Spirit of God moves. What camp are you from? I'm not in a camp. Amen. I heard a preacher say one time, I don't run no circles anymore. You know, I'm with the people of God. I'm not in a circle anymore. I'm not in a camp anymore. You know, they, if it can be said about me, it's been said about me. So I don't, I don't really care anymore. I mean, I, care, I want to help people. Uh, I'm just not religious anymore. And what I found out, they could be, oh, hallelujah. So Jesus' real issue is with these people right here. This is the camp that he's from. And these people really think they got it locked. They got it locked. You know what we think as, as disbelievers or they think? We think we got it locked. Man, when I was working with those dudes off the street, they would come in reeking with alcohol, stoned. I start talking about God, and I just sit there, and I think, you know what? These, I never heard that ever come out of a conference before. I'm not knocking a conference. I'm just thinking, Jesus Christ. What I found out, man, God is bigger than our circles. Yes, he is. God, have you been talking? You've been, you been talking to God? So Jesus now has got to saw. He's got he, he's got to take care of this issue right here. Luke chapter nine. And watch this now. Watch him take care of this. Watch him take care of this. Luke chapter number nine. Jesus is in Galilee. He's fixing to leave Galilee. This is Palm Sunday, by the way. He's he's going to make his way to Jerusalem, and he's going to make his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So he's 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 sixty five miles from Jerusalem. He don't have a car. He don't have an airplane. He's got to walk there. So it's a three-day journey. Everybody say a three-day journey. From where Jesus is right here to, watch this, Jerusalem. If, now watch this, if he goes through Samaria. Now, Jews would not go. If they were in Galilee, they would not go through Samaria. Why? Why? Because this group of people were half-breeds, number one, and the second reason they would not go through there is because they didn't want to associate themselves with half-breed people because these half-breed people believed they had a lock on God. So they would walk around Samaria, and then it would take them four days to get there. It, Jesus cannot be late. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus cannot be late. He's got to be hung on that cross, watch this, at 9 o'clock, not two minutes after 9, not two minutes before 9, at exactly 9 o'clock, he's got to be hung on that cross. So Jesus, watch this, he set the time up where he would have to exactly go through Jerusalem, not go through Jerusalem, but go through Samaria to get to Jerusalem. And when he begins to tell his people, you know what, i got to go to Jerusalem. And there, these, the, his disciples, all of them are Jews except one, and Luke's a Gentile. That's why Luke records this, not the others. And he looks at me and says, i got to go through Samaria. And they said, wait a minute, we don't go through Samaria. Jesus says, we do this time. Watch what the scripture says. And it came to pass. When the time was, am I boring y'all? 
When it come, when it, and it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set. See that word set? S-E-T. If you look it up in the, in the Greek, it's akin to the very word cross. Everybody say set. If you look it up in the Greek, the cross had to be set up. Same, almost identical, same Greek word. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. So what he had to do, he had to set his face to go toward this, to solve this issue right here, this issue right here, I've got to solve it. I done took care of this one. But see, to solve it, I've got to go through Samaria. Are you following me here? So he set to go there to solve this issue because he's got to tell these people right here, you ain't got the lock on God. I want to say to the Baptists, the Methodists, the Pentecostals, especially kingdom, <laughs> finished work, and especially all the grace people, you ain't got the lock on God. So he set his face to go toward Jerusalem. Now, to set his face, which means I'm not going to be stopped. And I'm going to go right through the middle of Samaria. Now, watch this. Have you ever had, listen, be, don't answer this out loud, but be honest. Don't be honest with me. Just be honest with yourself. Have you ever had a problem with Jesus? And if you said, I don't, you lied. I had this preacher ask me about two months ago. He said, you cussed God out yet? I said, no, I ain't cussed him out. By no means if I cussed God out, but I sure had to have some strong talks with him. <laughs> now let's ask it again. Have you ever had an issue with Jesus? Yeah, I'll help you. You have. Because especially when you didn't get your prayer answered, when you thought you ought to get it answered, you had an issue. When you didn't get blessed like you thought you ought to get blessed, you had an issue. When somebody didn't do what you thought they ought to do, and you tried to make God make them do it, you had a problem with him. So Jesus sets to go. When he goes, he goes right through the middle of Samaria. And it came to pass when the time was come, I'll have you sat down just a minute, Margie, that he, that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face. Everybody say his face. His face to go toward Jerusalem. Next verse. And sent messengers, watch this, watch how it reads, before his face. And they went and entered into a village of Samaritans to make ready for him. Now watch this. These guys, Jesus sent their Jews. <laughs> Can you imagine telling a Jew they got to go through Samaria to make ready? Where am I at? And they sent messages before his face, and they went and entered into the village of Samaritans to make ready for him. Next verse. Have you ever had a problem with people not receiving you? <laughs> They don't like me. They didn't receive me. Well, honey, guess what? They didn't receive Jesus either. There it is right there. They, you know what people say to me quite often? They ain't going to receive you anymore. I don't have a problem with that. Because you know what I found out? They didn't receive him either. And honey, they ain't going to receive him. Watch this. More than likely, they ain't going to receive you every time. But there is a group of people somewhere that's waiting on you. They may not be in a church. They may not be in a sanctuary. But somewhere they are waiting on you. And when you show up, it would be like God walked in my midst. And they did not receive him. You know what Jesus did? He didn't say, oh, Lord, help me. I think I'll go around. They didn't receive me. Watch this. Honey, you're going to stand up and tell some people some stuff in love, not with a hateful way, and they still ain't going to receive you. That's why your face has got to be set. And they didn't. And when I say your face has got to be set, I don't mean you. <laughs> I'm a face. No, no. His face was set in love. And they did not receive him. Because his face was as though, watch, watch what, here's what they're mad about. His face was as though they would go to Jerusalem. Here's what they're hacked off at. They're thinking he's for them and he's saying the same thing they're saying to us. This is what bothers me because I come out of some of these camps. People have a problem with me because they think I stand for the same thing everybody else stands for. Here's what I found out, especially about what you call grace people. They may say they are grace, but when you need grace, unless it meets their criteria, you're not going to get grace. They got their doctrine set. 
And grace has a boundary as long as it does not mess with their reputation. Here's what I found out. I don't have a reputation. So if you mess up, honey, run to me and I'll run to you. And me and you and God will get it all worked out. Am I boring, y'all? This is real important. You stay right here with me just for a few more minutes. You've got to hear this. So here's what they're mad. They're mad because Jesus is going to Jerusalem, and they're thinking Jesus, they're, that, that Jesus is against them. But this ain't the deal. Jesus is going to Jerusalem to set this thing straight. I, I don't have time to go any farther with that right there, but what Jesus did, he goes to Jerusalem. And he denounces. He denounces the Jerusalem, the Mosaic system. He does it in Matthew 24. I don't have time. When he comes out, he walks out of that temple. This is, just, this is just hours before he's crucified, a few days before he's crucified. He walks out and he said, not one stone is going to be left upon another. And he's denouncing the Jewish system. And what he's really saying is, Kimmy Sharon's going to get back up here. What is it? You can bring the baby with you. Bring the baby. I'm going to use that too. See, here's what's bad. See, she's got a baby in her arms. See, and she, here she is. She, she's fighting with this one over here. And this one's fighting over here. What's really bad, this baby, this baby will grow up thinking she's right and this one's wrong. How prophetic. She'll have a baby in her arms too. Watch this. And, and this baby, this baby will grow up hating this baby. And this baby will think she's right, and this baby over here will think it's right because mama said we were right and they were wrong. This baby will say mama was right and this one was wrong. Oh, God, help me. Help me. Help me, help me, help me. And you know what we've done? Kingdom, Pentecostal, Baptist, we've all done it. And now the higher we go and the deeper we go, the bigger the, bigger the mass gets. Now we've got what we call grace, but we don't receive people by grace. So what Jesus did, he dispelled that one, and he dispelled that one, and here's how he did it. Amen. Sit down. Sit down. Now, there ain't nothing to argue with but this. Argue with this now. And the good part about it is on the seventh day, there ain't no man on that cross, which means, watch this, all men are created equal and have been redeemed by the... And watch this. See, the baby's happy now that there's no argument going on. Go. Real quickly, real quickly, Rachel. I'm going to go down through my Psalms. Real quickly, real quickly. Psalms. First Psalm. Watch this. I want to read these. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face... My heart said unto thee, thy face, thy Lord, will seek. See, the Old Testament people, they had to seek his face. So these people thought you seek it on this mountain. These people thought you seek it on this mountain. Is this, is this one? Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. Just keep on clicking them. I'll just read them. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face, watch this, to shine upon thy servant. Save me from thy mercy's sake. Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. In the deal, they thought you had to be here to get his face. They thought you had to be here to get his face. Next verse. That thou, that thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. Watch this. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come and save us. See, they're saying his face is what saves us. Not a prayer, but his face. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine. And watch what they say about his face. And we shall be saved. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved. Read on. Roll it. Did I little? Okay. All these are in the book of Psalms. And the last thing, Psalms 150, last verse. Psalms 150, last verse. 
Last thing David said out of all the Psalms was this, let everything a half breath praise the Lord. He got a revelation. It's not even on this mountain, and it's not on Mount Mountain. It's just you worshiping from your heart. Stand on your feet. Feel like I've just bored y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to the point of where I hear people say, well, I preach a grace message or a finished work message or a kingdom message or a Baptist message or a Pentecostal message. Why don't we just preach Jesus? Yeah, brother, say it. Hold it a second. Hold it. Where's the microphone at? We can't, people on camera can't hear you and they need to hear it. I was thinking about when he was talking about these two churches going back and forth and fighting. The Bible says that the, the word of God says that there was two men that came in the temple one time. One thought he was self-righteous. The other one was a sinner and he was standing beside the self-righteous man. And he sat there, the self-righteous man said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like this sinner over here. I'm not a drunkard or adulterer or fornicator or thief or whatever the man, whatever the man had done. He said, Lord, I'm thankful that I'm not like this man. And he was bragging upon himself. But the Bible says that our own righteousness is filthy in the sight of God. There's only one righteousness, and that's his righteousness, and that's his blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. That's the only thing, his love, his grace, his mercy, and his blood that was shed, his redemption, his resurrection is the only thing that makes us righteous. But the sinner, all he said is he couldn't even look up to heaven. All he did was he beat upon his breast. Mm -hmm. And all he said is, Lord, have mercy upon me, for I am a sinner. That man knew that he had need of God. This man already thought he was self-righteous in the eyes of God. Jesus said, which man left the temple in better shape? And they said, the man that confessed that he was a sinner. We all have need of one another. Yeah. Amen. Like she posted. Amen. Knock the names off the doors, people. It's a grace message. God has need of the Catholics. He has yes, need of he does. the Church of God, the Presbyterian, the Baptist, the Methodist. It does not matter what's hanging on the door. It is Jesus Christ's church, bar none. Yes, sir. We are the body. He is the head. Yes, sir. We will not go any farther than what the head directs. Amen. If we don't line up, you're slowing down the head. I mean, you can't stop the head, but you're slowing down God's process. If you get in line, it's all about love, grace, and mercy. Amen. You don't clean up the people. That's right. You love them. Amen. You love them where they're at. Yeah. You let, Jesus said, you bring them in, I'll clean them up. Amen. It's not your job to clean them up. It's your job to love them. If you love them, love speaks volumes. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. You loving them where they're at will cover a multitude of sin. People do not need to hear how bad they are. They need to know how good they are in Christ. Love is the only thing that is going to change this world. I've always heard people say there's no hope. There's no hope. There's no hope. If you're condemning people and putting people down, no, there's no hope. But if you're loving them in God, there is hope. It would change their life if we ever line up and find out who we are in the bosom of the Father, in the love. We will rock this world. We will change this world. Washington, D.C., all the way across the seas, we will change this world. I keep telling you, God is not only a USA Today God. He is a universe. Universal God. Amen. You can't hate your brothers and sisters overseas. He created everybody. Yeah. We're all on equal playing field. I hate to tell you folks, yep. we're all on equal playing field. I'm tired of listening to people come in the plant and pointing fingers and putting people down. God loves us all. Like he said, sin's not an issue factor anymore with God. 
Love them where they're at. It'll change the world. Yeah. 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 He feel he lived a lifetime feeling inadequate. He done some bad things. He had never killed anybody, I don't think, but he done some things that he felt like God was not accepting. So he didn't feel fit. How many people out there don't feel worthy yeah. to come in here? Yes, yeah. yeah. He never felt worthy, so he'd go to all these other other little churches. But he wouldn't go over to the first church. Yeah. That's what he wasn't good enough to go to the first church. Yeah. He was good enough to write a check to buy an organ. Yeah. But he was never good enough to walk in. God forgive me. God forgive me. God forgive me. I'm not talking about those people, Pastor. I understand. We've got to love people where they are and yeah. got to realize that what did you say? Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Yeah. There's nothing we've got. Not a thing. I, I, and I like I said, my hero Grand dies, my father he died. He's been gone for 28 years, but when he died, when he died, they stood in line for it. 11 o'clock that night. They did. And they came up and they said, we needed some groceries. And J.M. went and bought some groceries. We needed a load of coal. And J.M. went and bought some coal. That's what I want to do. Yeah. I don't want nobody to know nothing about it. We had things we never knew. I need a pair of shoes to go out of during high school. And I want a pair of shoes to wear through the, through the line. Yeah. That's what I want to do. That's what God's about. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not a granddaughter of my daddy, but we need to get more like Christ. So let yeah. those get them love with. Yeah. And everybody is worthy, Sean. Everybody's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was never in that hardware that your dad did not smile at me and love me. Do you remember the pool hall next door? I laid out of school many times in that pool hall. <laughs> Anybody else got anything you want to share real quickly? Well, it's good to have you here, Chess. There you go. Yeah. Dismiss us in prayer. Yeah, you can do it, honey. Lord, I thank you for the day that we've had together. I thank you for the time that we've had. Lord, I thank you for the message. Lord, may it go out and reach everybody that is out there that needs you and lost and undone without you. May you help us and guide us through the rest of our week and bless us. Thank you for everything. Amen. Amen. All right. Love on somebody. God bless you.